without crushing your hand. Hmm, see what you're talking about. Hmm. Hey guys, this video was brought to you by SPAN. Hey, it's Joel Walsman, CEO and Master Electrician of Jefferson Electric. Today we're at my buddy Tom's house. Boom, Tom is an electrical engineer by training, but also an entrepreneur running an independent surgery practice, one of the last of, with robotic oncology. Da Vinci. Robotic Oncology. Way up here, way up here. Today he's doing the mundane with us. Tom had an opportunity to upgrade his service equipment, including a Generac ATS, reached out to us, checked the description if you've got an opportunity and want to go live on a video call. And because we're both co-located in Indianapolis, we rolled out here and now we're doing a project together and it's a ton of fun. So, big picture. So, uh, we were in our last home for 30 years. I'd spent 30 years remodeling it, getting it just where I wanted it, but everybody that's getting old wants a first floor master, and that didn't have a first floor master, and then this was a God thing. We're 20 houses away from our granddaughter. Mm. The way the deal came together was perfect, and so this is our forever house, whether that be for a year or whatever I've got left in the tank at 67. <laughs> so, um, one of the things, I'm an electrical engineer by training, and I've uh, done a lot of electrical work, but this has got a Thomas Butts panel, which is ancient technology, and it was, it's full. It's a full Thomas Butts panel. What I read about the stuff wasn't very good, and I wanted enough power to do a lot of projects. So I wanted power for my shop. I wanted more power over here. And so that started me on a journey of what's the best in class system that's out there. So as we did the research, I was looking at, it came down to really the Square D QO as opposed to home line, and then the uh, Siemens. So then started going through all that, and I was kind of landing on the Square D QO, and we talked to you guys, and I said, well, it's a little more expensive, but people like it a little bit better. And so then we got a lot deeper, got really, really anal. So the next step was, well, what is code? So I spent weeks learning. <laughs> was crazy. I went and learned all the 2008 code and bought the code books and read all this stuff. And, uh, and so I saw this, well, do we have to have arc fault circuit interrupters? And I've seen a lot of issues with that. My, I was just came back from California where my brother-in-law's got that in the, his whole house and they have nuisance tripping, crazy, crazy problems. So I started doing some research on that. I saw there's a class action suit against Siemens for nuisance tripping. So then, because I'm an electrical engineer, I pulled the patents from Siemens and Square D and from um, Leviton, I guess. Yeah. Was, right? And I read all the patents, and because I'm a digital, digital guy, I understood what was going on, and I came to the conclusion. I said, well, I don't want anything to do with these Siemens art fault interrupters, right? And then as I started reading, I said, well, I really don't want anything to do with any of them, because basically what each one of those circuit breakers is as a computer and it's looking at the waveforms like an oscilloscope it's capturing the waveforms and then they have stored the signature of what are nuisance trips so that they're looking at like 32 cycles of of your electric and says oh this is a problem this isn't a problem but what's happened though since these since the stuff all came out was we've introduced all kinds of led lighting and other things that are creating different waveform signatures and so they're creating all this nuisance tripping. Well, the way that Siemens has handled it, from what I read, is they say, oh, well, just replace the breaker. And the breakers are, what, 50 or $60 for a combo breaker. Well, what they haven't told you, at least if the, if the class action suit is accurate, is the new breaker is the same breaker. It's just got new software in it with more signatures. So you're paying for their, okay? So then as I research this more, I found that, I think it was Leviton, uh, all of the patents allow for you to like have a Bluetooth connection, because these are computers, so that you could download new software to your circuit breakers <laughs> with new signatures. And I was saying, uh, but when I was looking at this with Joel, I said, man, somebody ought to put together a panel that's got smart breakers and wireless and Bluetooth and just, and, and then sure enough, we found that Leviton has their smart yeah. system. 
So anyhow, at the end of all that anal retentive <laughs> search, I said, I don't want no stinking arc fault circuit interrupters if I don't have to have them. And fortunately here in Indiana, we don't have to have them yet. So we're not gonna do that. So now I said, okay, well, Siemens versus square D, what do we do? So then as I started looking into that more, I said, well, if we're not gonna put an arc fault, I wanna do ground fault at all of the, at the panel. So you look at square D QO, well, guess what? they don't have because of the supply chain they do not have any 15 amp ground fault circuit interrupters available anywhere you can only get the combos with arc fault i said i don't want no arc fault hmm. so now i'm like i like square d but nope and then we got into it deeper and started researching the surge protectors yeah and so i was comparing the technology of the siemens first surge product with the square d breakers that you know goes in and this seemed like a superior solution. So at the end of the day, came out with, well, the pricing's better on Siemens. Your team knows Siemens. You guys got a relationship with Kirby. If issues come up, you can find stuff. I don't see any compelling reason to go the square D route. So that's, that's how that went. And then we had it all figured out that we wanted, I wanted the 60 position panel that, that Siemens has. Supply chain, they, Kirby doesn't have it. Nobody in the country has it. And, Supposedly they will have it like today. I don't know if that's true. That's nice. <laughs> so Joel said, well, why don't we, you want your 60 positions, why don't we go with two panels instead? So that's, that's where we ended up with that. And um, yeah, so that's, that's how we got that. And then we're gonna have a sub panel down in the basement. And then the other major thing is, is we're pre-wiring for a generator, for a Generac generator. So then he said, well, we're gonna have to load balance on here you got to figure that out so there's load balancing based on you know how much current but there's also an issue here I, I want this to be a clean installation and do we have enough wire to do what we're going to do and so when i looked at that when we go upstairs and you'll see i think i've solved it both ways both in terms of balancing power but all of these with the yellow tags on them here all of these are ones that feed from that direction that if we pull those up and drop them down over here, you'll have ample wire. So basically, the plan is right now, as your student, unless you decided something else, is that we're going to pull all these with the yellows back up, and because they feed from that direction, you'll drop them down here, and you'll actually have more length to work with. And then everything that's over here will stay, as well as the 240-volt circuits. Yeah, what happened here at first, I thought when I met with you guys and did the first videography. So this will be really simple. It looks like all the wiring's coming from that way. And so we can just pull it back, drop it down here and you have plenty of wire, but that turned out not to be true. So um, now as far as the load balancing, what we're talking about doing here is right now we're coming from the meter out straight into here. We're gonna come from the meter to the generac, which will be the master disconnect switch. And also the transfer switch is going to come through the wall and then the 200 amp panel will be right here. And then we're going to feed a 125 amp breaker that will feed the second panel. And then there's a 100 amp breaker that will then feed the sub panel in the basement. And then the 40 amp circuits, that, I mean the 240 volt circuits that are here right now, uh, the dryer circuit, I converted it to gas. I'm going to go ahead and hook it up just in case 20 years from now, somebody wants to put an electric dryer in there rather than pull wires. So that's, even though it's a 40 amp circuit, it's not gonna draw anything. The air conditioner, which is a 40 amp circuit, uh, I metered that out, that draws at full load about uh, 18 amps per side. And then the big boy in all of the three that would stay over here is your range. And if I crank that all the way up, it was drawing 48 amps per side. Now we're gonna convert that to a gas range at some point anyhow but you're still you're talking 48 amps and then 16 amps for the air conditioner and and then these are mostly other light circuits but when you're all said and done here out of the and we wanted to use all full width breakers no split breakers so I, I think we're going to end up using on the left one on this side we're going to end up using 26 of the 30 full size breakers on this side we're going to end up using 20. So we should have 10 extra full-size slots over there and four extra over here. Right.
Now the, the new 240 amp services, so, we have, uh, so what we've got right here, this basically takes a complete mapping of everything that we currently have into what breakers and everything else. But all of the ones that are yellow, which will tag up with all the numbers on here and on here, the ones that are in yellow are the ones that are going to move over to this side. Super. So that's pretty straightforward. Now we have two new 240 volt circuits here in the garage. So one is for this heater that's up over here. And so that guy will come up now. I originally had said a, an outlet, where said, no, let's not do an outlet coming out of here. But it actually turns out if you guys want to do what I did, if that's legal by code, it's much, much easier the way the structure is set up if you come out of the ceiling. So if there's a way that you can legally come out of the ceiling, yeah. that will be far, far easier than trying to find your way down here. Right. So that's, that's a 240 uh, one. And then this is the one, it'll be more traditional like what you're doing, is I want a, uh, a 20 amp uh, 240 volt for my compressor. And Super. I've cut some access slots up, up upstairs, which I'll show you guys in a minute to get there. So, um, and then finally, uh, the dryer circuit, which I think I said has got a 40 amp breaker, but we're not using anymore. We're going to drop in a new 20 amp, 120 volt, 120 volt um, deal. And so, because all the drywall's out, we'll just be able to pop it in from the back side. So there's the, there right now is your uh, existing washing machine one. And we'll look on the other side, but we can either on here or over here pop in another one from the back. Great. Well, what we do have though for, so from big picture though, is we're going to go up into the attic over there, coming through the attic, and then you're going to drop down. I've got one two inch hole here. If you nice. need more than that, then you put in more. And then you're going to have to come make your way across over here, and you're going to go down there. Ah, beautiful. Down to the basement. So, um, so yeah, this, this is going to get us down. It was, this was tricky because the house ends over here and the way that attic is set up, you just couldn't make that. Yep. So I think, um, well, you need to understand where the routing is going to be. So you're going to be pulling, you're going to be pulling, uh, whatever is two odd or whatever size wire it is. One out. Yep. One out. So you, we've got two sets of wires running way to the other side of the house. So one of them is for the hundred amp sub panel. And then the other one is going to go to the generator. Yeah, and then along with that, I'm supplying the control cables. So we have two, a six wire, six hundred volt control cable that's used for the generac, and then I've got a two wire, six hundred volt that's going to uh, control the air conditioner. So basically, from here you're going to have for the generator your generator wire and the two control wires. Once you drop into the basement. The air conditioner wire, you just leave there and I take that from there and that's going to go out to the air conditioner. And then, uh, so one, two, three, and then, the, then the wire for the sub panel down there. Um, so, I mean, I would think if I were you guys, I would want to make sure I understand my plan of how the wiring is going to go. I'll show you where I've drilled holes, but you're going to need to drill more holes so you get that figured out, how you want to route the wire through the laundry room. So, I think what I would do is just at least walk you what, through what my thinking was of how to Sounds get good. from A to B. So originally it says to put the generator close to your power source and all the rest and we had located a spot right on that side of the wall right behind the main panel but it's powered by natural gas and of course the natural gas in this house couldn't be any further away on the other side of the house. So I, I ran one inch gas pipe outside thinking that was going to be okay and when I got into it I found out for that length of a run I had to have one and a quarter inch uninterrupted dedicated high pressure gas with its own regulator here. I'm like, I'm not running high pressure gas under my house. And so then it was, do we just forget the generator or what we're doing now instead is we're running, we just said one on, mm -hmm. all the way over to the other side of the house. Uh -huh. And then that way I can just run a one inch gas line into the generator over there. So, okay. ah, it's, it's even cooler up here than <laughs> it is right now. Yeah. Yeah. So it's cooler up here. So, and there's where our cheap man's air conditioning while you guys are working. Yeah. Later appreciate on. it. Okay. So here's where I was saying that the, uh, the wiring where we can pick up some length. And so the current panel all drops down over here, but if you're going to put the new panel two spots over, 
basically you'll come another 14 inches off of there, drill a hole, and pull all these yellow wires back. You can drop them down and you'll pick up that much more. Slack. Yeah. Yeah, yeah um, we had to put Linda, your wife, on payroll to yes. help you out with all this and get yeah. it. Yeah, get she, it. she was downstairs and we were tugging on the wires on both sides because, uh, yeah, because I, I, I got tricked out because there's wires coming out this, uh, this side over here that I thought were going up, but they aren't. So anyhow, basically we have identified all of the wires that can be pulled back and then map those down to that side. So now what Joel's, uh, how you're gonna do it, I don't know, but you can come out over here, run along this way, and over here is where you're gonna drop down to the basement. So if you look down over here, if I get it, uh, you might need a little more light, I should've brought a flashlight. But anyhow, there's the two inch hole right there that goes. It is. That'll, that's gonna get you down. And I don't know if you need more than two inches for all those wires or not, because you got the two one-aughts and then mm -hmm. the control cables over there. Yeah, we might expand that a little bit. Now the second thing is for the, here's why I'm saying it could be much, much easier for you. Uh, so this is the thermostat wire right here. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's for the so, garage heater. Garage heater, so. Perfect. So instead of going down through the wall and everything else, if you can put something in the ceiling right here, that's super, super easy, right? That's great, and perfect. Then, and then this is the only one that's a little challenging. And so what you're gonna need to do over here to get your electric uh, from my outlet for my thermostat is here's the top of the sill plate over Perfect. here. So probably come through here, down to there, down to there, and straight down. Great. So you got access holes all over the place. Good, good. So this right here is a, a 16, I think it's 16 gauge, 160 foot. <laughs> So this is 160 foot of 16 gauge, right. um, six wire. That's the primary control wire. And this is 600 volt, two wire. So we're gonna run these together. Basically, this is gonna go, once we hit the basement, I'm gonna route that out to the air conditioner. That's great. And that is a feature where the Generac ATS has right. the ability to toggle the air conditioning on and off if the loads are um, yes. peaking. So they actually have four smart air conditioner module things built into it. And I only have one air conditioner, but if you had multiple, as it sees that the Generac is pulling near full load, it starts shutting the air conditioners. So. Beautiful. All right. So, I'm down there. All right. So now, if you look, I'll wait till he's here, I guess. Yeah. All right. So if you look here, can you see, I can see the light? Yeah. See? So now, so I, I tried to pick a spot that was away from all the rest of this. It's great. So you're basically, and if you need another hole, then I guess you'll put another hole in there. Um, and basically, we're going to come out this way, and however you're going to sweep around, we're going to, we're, you're going to go out around over here. So whichever channel you want. But if you go through this channel right here, and then you follow me, that channel comes out right here, and the planned 100 amp sub panels right here. So you can make a sweeping thing, come over either. I would suggest this one because then you don't have to go through that mm -hmm. blocking over there. That's great. So we got a, uh, a 20 position panel for this. So, um, lug panel. So, and we're only gonna install right now just uh, two things. So I've got, uh, we're gonna put one 20 amp, 240 volt guy right here. And we're going to put one uh, GFI 20 amp over here, and then I'll take it from there after they have run power all over the place. Now, this last part of it, though, is the generator. So if you're coming out of here with all these wires, now we're going to come across. When we get outside, what you're going to see is I've got the uh, pad located where, uh, where the pad's going to go for the generator. I've got it marked where the gas line will come up and where the electric line is going to come up. And so if I had you come out directly behind the generator, like you're going to come out the wall and just go straight down and under and up to the generator, uh, you'd come out right there. But uh, as Joel said, he said that really the cutoff shouldn't be directly behind the generator. It should be a little bit off to the side. So it's going to be over this way a little bit. And when you determine where that says, you can just basically measure 
off the frame of reference, which is the gas line, instead of 99 inches, it's going to be something less than that. Okay. So, so there's your frame from this side. Figure out where you want it on that side, then come back and or drill it from the outside in. Just don't, just don't go through my water pipe, please, over here. <laughs> <laughs> and then this right here, I'm like, what is going on with all this conduit that's up here? And it turned out that the person was an avid golfer, and they were using that to hang a golfing net to, to tee off into. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so I'm going so to repurpose this conduit for the drops around the shop here. Nice. <laughs> it's uh, increased in value substantially since they hung it up here yeah. several years ago. <laughs> so then we can show you outside and where that comes out. So this is where the pad's going to be, okay, for the new generator. And... Uh, so the gas line co will come in right here, and then on the back of the generator panel, there's uh, both a one and a quarter or a three quarter inch conduit uh, to bring your wires in. So uh, normally what they do is they use the one and a quarter and bring your one out through that, and then use the, uh, the other one to, to bring in that control cable. Nice. So, so you said, originally I said that 99 inch, uh, see here's your 99 inch line right here. Nice. That's right here. And you said, no, you don't want to have that right there. So you want to, I guess you want to put it over here somewhere. Yep, keep it serviceable and three foot of clearance in front of it. And these these bushes will go because you can't have them next to the generator. Got so, it. So wherever you think over here, and just measure off of the pipe over there. And then you can, you know, I mean, you can either drill from the inside out or outside in. That's great. Does that make sense? It does. All right, so this is the generatic uh, generator. Generac, not geriatric, Generac. <laughs> uh, it serves both as an automatic transfer switch and it's also going to become the emergency disconnect for the house. And so what's going to happen here is the line utility source connections are going to come in up here, up on utility source, and your uh, utility um, uh, neutral is going to go neutral or ground? Neutral. Uh, both, since yeah, it's main disconnect. They both go go over there, and then down over here. Now the the output uh, over here that's going to be your feed over to the new panel, and these two right here are going to be the wires that go to the generator, and then the grounds go up over here, and I've got I've got pictures of that. Then all my control wires. We're not going to terminate the control wires. We're going to put them in here and just leave them for me. So I'm not going to hook those up until there's a generator. I'll yeah. take a chance on picking up some spurious electric, you know, lightning strike that zaps something or something like that. Right. So we'll just leave plenty of wire in there. And these three fuses need to come out before we do this because it's a known issue. If you don't pull them out, uh, you're probably going to blow them uh, when you start the thing up. So I've read that enough places and I did find it discreetly in their documentation. So we'll, <laughs> discreetly. So we'll, Wonderful. The way, this, the way this thing works, you see this big, big Mongo deal, deal right here. Actually, if I pull out the manual driver on this, so it would be done electronically. But right now, it's, it would be switching all the power through the utility. But if the thing decides it's not going to do that, boom, it throws this down this way and then it, it takes the power from the generator. And when once it sees that there's line power back, it boom brings it brings it back. So um, these wires over here are the control wires, and then this right here is the smart air conditioning module thing. So you can have up to four air conditioners on there, and basically this just goes to the uh, the actuator, the basically the the relay on the air conditioner to turn it on and off. So that'll interrupt it. Great job laying it all out, Tom. I'm okay. excited to get going on this. We're planning the utility cut over to the automatic transfer switch for tomorrow. So today's the groundwork day mm -hmm. and then tomorrow's hustle butt so we can get the power off and back on with the delays that the utility is going to throw at us. They always give us a one to three hour window which turns into two to twelve right. pretty quick much too often. Uh, so Tom's got a generator on deck yep, from a friend. A generator over there. Yeah, so portable. On the generator right here and that'll be for the, just for the refrigerator the freezer. And we use this opportunity to defrost the main freezer downstairs and empty it out so there's nothing in there. Nice. Good. So I'm excited. I, I've, you know, at first I was like, oh, I can probably do this all myself. And then I was like, oh, 
Uh, <laughs> I don't have any power Sorry for three that. days while I'm <laughs> <laughs> Live like your camping camp, like you're stranded. <laughs> no, but anyhow, I'm very excited about you guys' company. Very, I, I mean, I watched your videos and I talked to Joel and I mean, I think you guys are really blessed and not blowing smoke up your skirt or anything like that, but you're, you're very knowledgeable. You're a great communicator. Um, you seem like you have great integrity and that's, that's a hard thing to put into a package anymore in this day and age. So that's why I said to him, I said, if I had one more daughter, I'd love you to be my son-in-law, but I don't have any more daughters. So there and I'm married and I love my wife. Right. There you go. That's good to say. Uh, that's right. Uh, but Tom lives here in Indianapolis and so we're just excited to connect yeah. through ePro and then right. we always have a link in all of our descriptions where you can jump on a video call and that's exactly what right. Tom did. So we connected and we hit it off. I'm going to say the same everything back to you. You're an excellent planner, organizer, communicator, leader. You, you take it to a detail. What AT&T said about Tom is if you want it, if it's important enough that it has to be done right, you call Tom's team. Yeah. And you see that here. I mean, everything's laid out. Everything's meticulously organized and sorted. Bruce's eyes are wide open. He's like, yeah, this is amazing. <laughs> this is the best work I've seen from a customer. So I'm really excited. Uh, okay. Customers don't usually even flip a scrap of paper at you with a wish list on it. They don't even do that. I mean, you do not even get that from the average customer. And what I'm going to say here is the customer, the, it's not thought of by far and at large in society today, but the customer has an obligation toward the success of the investment that's going to be made in their home. And if they do not clearly communicate expectations, yet they want a five-star experience, they are setting themselves up for disappointment and frustration because their expectations are held internally, they're concealed behind a wall, and yet somehow the contractor is under the obligation to meet and exceed those expectations, and that's not what Tom's done. Tom has done, laid everything on the table. At this point, if we fail, it's on me. So good job, Tom. You have set up the five-star experience here. You've gone above and beyond, and I don't expect this from customers, no. not in any way, shape, or form. Well, I mean, more, I, 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 my wife would tell you I'm already abnormal, but... The <laughs> Um, so one of the differences here is that with all the GFI breakers, you got to bring both the neutral and the hot to it. And so the question is, do you have enough length to do all that or are you going to have to, you know, put some little splice things in there or whatever. So then you and I talked about, well, should we mount the box upside down, which would put all this stuff up higher that would give you a little more distance. Right. Uh, also it would put you closer down here. So do you have, what's your thinking on that? Do you, mounted with a main breaker mounted upside down versus top. Let's take a look at our, also, our that's boxes. Good, yeah, that's good, you're so that one's a main lug, right? Yeah, so right. you're gonna come in the bottom of here. So actually, if you think about it, your, your uh, what do you call it? Uh, meter box, meter box out there, yeah. you're gonna come across and you're gonna, you're gonna put your own hole into the bottom here. Yep. And then you're going to come out the back of this. You can put a hole here and come out the back. And you're going to come out somewhere over in this area. Yeah. And this is a side to side main breaker. So we can invert it. Yeah. Uh, so the mains at the bottom, and we've reduced uh, the length of wire and we maximize our uh, accessibility for the branch circuits coming in the top. So, and then that, and then that way you're going to come out the other side then to feed into this one. And I'm thinking you're going to use this space and this space, right? So That's great. Not, yep not jammed up right next to each other. So, okay. Wow. The pulls, let's, uh, let's extend, uh, pull our materials out here and we'll kind of stage them accordingly with, with uh, segmented by job. And then we can warm up on some smaller jobs here. Uh, these two in particular, as we get the lay of the land here to there, uh, we can talk through what we want the attic wiring to look like, whether we prefer you specifically prefer to bore each rafter mm -hmm. and route through there, or if we want to secure to the face of the rafters and use running boards to yeah, both fine. preserve the integrity of the framing as well as, you know, as long as it doesn't impede on any future attic finish out right. wants or wishes, right. uh, no, that'll, that'll, that'll be a cost effective way to go. Yeah, I think that, uh, that's, that's what I would do. Nice. And then we'll pick up the, the lumber for tomorrow to put the running boards up there, but we'll, okay. we'll keep it nice and straight so we can get a, 
a two by four tight to it to okay. protect that wiring. And so what are you thinking? So I, what I try to do is pick an exit spot down uh, when you go into the basement there so you could make a nice, nice sweep. Yeah, so. it's perfect. Okay. I love it. Yeah, what wasn't there when you were here last time is I brought all the plumbing out to add the slop sink. Yeah. And that was a very, very tight fit. So I wanted that all in and not have to work around the electrical later. That's it, that's it. HVAC, plumbing, plumbing HVAC, but regardless of that order, electrical is third and final right. of the skilled trades and that's the proper procedure. And Tom's done that. Tom's a guy who can size gas lines, sweat copper, um, you know, spec out electrical equipment. He does it all. So we're going to be learning from Padre today. Let's uh, unload the truck. That's a gentle way of saying. <laughs> uh, let's let's unload the truck and okay. and get things laid out to kind of to the fullest extent. Unpacked, okay. unboxed, okay. and uh, we'll know exactly what we're working with. I love this first surge protection. We've added these as a product line. Tom put us onto them, and uh, they truly are. You feel like you're getting quite a bit more. They're substantially larger, heavier, um, better ratings all around than your standard breaker style, Mike Holmes, that kind of stuff. So really, really glad for those. This is what I think we'll do on our wire runs. We'll set up a, uh, the wire pole here in the garage, pull down through the basement, the longest portion first, and then we'll peel them off to length and cut them and pull this final portion, as opposed to trying to fight the up, over, down, and through all in one pole. That's a lot of right. kind of uh, bucket brigade yeah. effort. Okay. So yeah, we'll take them. We'll take them. Right. When we're bringing the wires in, none of this jazz, like where it goes kind of crisscross applesauce, right. where it's Make got sure twists to it. We're just gonna take pains, straighten everything out, flatten it up, and make it beautiful. We'll probably also slip a two by four block in there, 12 inches or so below, above the top of the panels so we can staple everything flat. And then we're also going to use these nail plates. You can go ahead and put these in. One nail plate above each panel. And I've got a third one, which I might use over there. Um, but this nail plate in is going to replace those. And you'll just slip it up in there and secure it. At least two screws. And then this one over there. And I think you'll be able to slip it in there as well. Okay. So if you want to start with that. <clears throat> sure. Keep the screws wide and then we'll go ahead and bore some holes and I've got the Milwaukee whole hog here. Um, I think by the time we pull these circuits out, we could reuse that existing hole uh -huh. for the 100 amp generator feed. Okay. The ATS will sit out here and rather than trying to come through and fight the panel bay, I think we bring it through that 100 amp feed through okay. and exit this space. And then uh, above the panel here, I think we could go ahead and drill four. Mm -hmm. One will be for the basement sub panel is coming off here, correct? Mm -hmm. So one will be for that and three holes of this size will be for branch circuits. Okay. Seems sufficient to you? And then we've, yeah. we've got these nail plates. We'll put one nail plate above each panel that will protect the full, okay. full top okay. plate. All right. Okay. Okay. So All we'll right. proceed with a little bit of layout. Bruce, go ahead and do a double check up above so you know exactly what you're, we're, we're getting into, whether it's some serious hardware we don't want to dole our bits on or some wires that are laying across the plates. But let's do three there. We'll reuse this one and that's sufficient as it stands. And then tell you what, you and I will also take, well, let's take this time as we're going up. I apologize with Tom to take a look in the attic at um, our wiring pathway. Uh, the top plate downstairs is this one. Is that where you're? No, I uh, thought it was. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It is this one. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, these but are just the, coming from... They pulled the circuits through the garage ceiling, which yeah. is where those are going. Gotcha. Yeah. So I'm thinking then, Tom, we come up in the corner back here. Yeah. So the feeds come straight through. Mm -hmm. We're gonna bore, uh, Bruce, two, two of those um, two and nine sixteenths holes here in the corner. Ugh. One, uh, a bit, pretty much as tight as you can, just side by side to that top plate. And so they'll come up. They'll go through this blocking. We'll fish them through there, pull them out here, and then probably secure them right right here in that two by four that we... I guess you need to make sure there's no blocking here, right? If you look, is it a clear shot all the way? It over? is a clear shot. Okay. Yeah. Let me just stick this folding ruler back there real quick. Yeah. It looks clear, but sometimes that's a false. Yeah. I think I can see. So we're at 43 and a half inches. I got more than 43 and a half. 
All right, so we'll come up here, we'll secure low, mm -hmm. and then we'll drop into our destinations. So this plate, since that's the one downstairs, am I actually drilling the same as these holes, or mm -hmm. in, not in this board? No, so the reason this is, uh, this is here is it's probably a drywall nailer. Right. So the, the garage ceiling is probably right in about the center of that. So you gotta keep it as tight to as you OSB. can. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we'll drill, then we'll do the nail plate after the fact. Okay. And then over here, Bruce, um, as you're drilling, we'll get a smaller bit, and we've got one in the bag that fits that drill nicely. And we need a smaller bit to fish down that wall. Just make sure you find the um, top plate there. Uh, this one, we're coming through the ceiling, so no holes required other than, let's go ahead and take it through the top plate. So if you can get one hole right there through the top plate, that'll just keep it a little cleaner. Same thing here, top plate as well as the wall top plate. Uh, yeah, well, actually, Bruce, it won't be it won't be any harm or difficulty. Let's uh, watch this thermostat wire, of course, but let's get two big holes through this top plate and one more through this one here, because both of our hundred amp feeders are going to come all the way across here and drop through, drop through, and then we'll take them from the garage. And what size are you wanting through the? Uh, are they? They're running this way, right? Uh, so we're actually going to be running our 100 amp feeders, uh, everything up here. Oh, okay. Yep. Then and dropping down. Yes. Okay. And the reason we're going to be able to do that is because we're going to protect with running boards. Right. Um, so we'll come back with 2x4, two 2x6 by two, two by material and put that up to protect them. Yep. And both of those come through this top plate and then down through this top plate. And Tom's got one hole there already. Yeah, heater's an 8.2 and the compressor is a 12.2. So we'll have two. A Romex there, a Romex here, two feeders and two control wires here. So we're gonna about to use our friend, the Milwaukee M18 whole hog. And before we go drilling a bunch of holes in Tom's house, here's a quick overview. We're in the attic, right above the electrical panels. We're gonna bring from the right stud bay, where the first main panel in the house is going, we're gonna bring three holes of this size and one two and nine sixteenths. All the holes we're we're drilling for our feeders are going to be that two and nine sixteenths because we're going to experience a lot of resistance on that pole if it's a tight fit and we're fighting it and we're going to be chafing the cable so we want to have a nice two two inch plus hole everywhere we're going to bring then one of the feeders up the center stud bay and that's the generator feeder that's coming in from the ats routing through the attic through the house into the generator at the far side of the home so three holes plus one right stud bay center stud bay, one larger hole. Then we're gonna penetrate this blocking. We're gonna fish over here, come up in the corner. We're gonna mount, we're gonna secure the wiring right up here in the attic, which you can't do that in a finished attic unless you use running boards. You're gonna see that at the end of the project, so stay tuned to that. So we're gonna secure our feeders, our control wires, our 12-2 Romex for the compressor, our 8-2 Romex for the garage heater and our two feeders and control wires that come down here. Everything when we penetrate is going to come through the top plate and down through the, the second top plate. And if you know what this specific piece of framing is called, drop it in the comments because I'm calling it a top plate. If you're a framer, that may not be technically accurate. I apologize. All right, back to the garage. This video is brought to you by SPAN. SPAN is the sexiest way to take control of your energy. Check the link below. Although Tom's probably got the electrical load of every device in his house documented in a master file somewhere, he's not necessarily attuned to their current draw at any moment. A SPAN smart panel can identify the normal use of a circuit and the normal electronic signature and load pattern of that circuit and provide an alert if anything falls outside of the normal use, which possibly would indicate a fault, failure, or an excessive waste of electricity. All that in the palm of your hand with real-time monitoring and control. <clears throat> if we can kind of get our criteria marked on the wall and figure out where everything's coming from, going to, so let's not confuse ourselves. That's not the top of panel. That's the top highest overcurrent device. Tom, is that too tall for you or Linda? Just because it's code doesn't mean it's optimal for no. you. No. You good? Yeah. All right. All right, so that's the limiting factor there. Okay, well here, let's start with this next. 
uh, the orientation of this panel on the left. So on the right, we've got the main breaker at the bottom. On the left, we've got main lugs here. What was your position for that uh, 125 feed through on your panel schedule? Did you have a location for that? Oh, for the, I'm sorry, for the which one now? Uh, the 125 that goes in this panel to feed this panel. Right. Uh, just wherever you want it, it doesn't matter, right? They're okay. all full slots, so. So you've not identified the locations of the no, new breakers no, yet? No. Okay, okay. Uh, so here's one option. We, we probably want them at the same height since there's the same physical dimension, yeah. right? Real clean finish. Yes. Uh, we've got these two inch knockouts right here. Mm -hmm. That'd be easy to go ahead and bore through there, through, knock our knockouts out and go through the stud base mm -hmm. and take that 125 from the top position through here and land it there. Mm -hmm. You like that finished? So the, the top of the panel would be an additional five inches above that mark. So it's getting pretty, pretty high. That's where our panel lands if we go that direction. Um, what if anything's gonna be too short? And I don't, currently we don't have any splices. No. Is that right? Yes. <clears throat> and everything reaches to here, yes. all the neutrals do. What's that delta? That's about six inches. So with the orientation of this panel, the, the neutral bar starts here which is still substantially above that. And we're gonna be gaining circuit length. That's this side. Right. So we're definitely in good shape mounting here. And the question is how much lower can we drop it before we run into trouble? And the answer, I think we could drop it five inches. So the highest over current device is now there. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, that's she's five inches shorter than me, so she's gonna reach that. Okay. Yeah, part of it's getting enough leverage on the breaker. Now you don't yeah. have a main. Now, those are hard to push. Right, and they'll be on the bottom now, right? Right. So you don't have a main to fight up there, and these branch circuits flip pretty easily. And they'll both be turned over, so that it's not. So they're not going to be like this. They're both going to be. This is going to be the bottom, and this is the bottom, right? or not, or no, so that they're yeah. both symmetrical. Yeah, I guess I like it. it. Yeah. With the that that'll make make the covers match up. Yep. We are coming in the bottom. I don't know if we're going to create our own hole or if we use one of those two yet until we transfer okay. in and out. Um, how about this? I wonder if we could transfer these ground bars up because this is going to get more or less congested and these are going to be the limiting factor. So I wonder if we can relocate to these factory holes here and drive those grounds towards the incoming branch circuits. How do you like that? Do you want to be the man to relocate that I'll pull out a tap so we can clean those holes we'll verify center on center seven and a half Let's see if that's what we're looking at that's it I like that okay. feel good about that okay take yeah. both up on yeah. both panels yeah. Yeah. okay um, tap set coming your way Tim you can start the prefab on both panels doing the not just the mounting slots so big one five inches and then all your other holes, small and big, 13 to 22 there. Oh, okay, so right now he's got me taking out the ground bars. So we're, we, because we're turning this thing upside down, we're gonna relocate the ground bars to the top. And I just need to know from Joel if he wants it this way or this way. Let's um, put one high and one low. And one will catch, yeah, so just like this. One will catch the uh, 100 amp feeder and one will catch the bonding conductors. Yeah, one will catch the main in, and one will catch the feeder out. Yep, that's yeah. it. And then how about uh, two inch in between? It's, uh, it's a little oversized for that 125, but we'll yeah. duct seal around it, yeah. seal it up. We don't want foreign materials. So Tim, there's your gauge. Great, thank It'll you. It'll be one, two. And we won't put those in yet until the panels are installed. Um, uh, wow, that is some material. Okay, uh, I'll just verify that's where we want to be, but okay. we'll, we'll ditch the big two. bit. We'll, we'll cap out at that one right there. Okay, how many inches is that, Joel? Yeah, that's Four a lot. Let's see. Least, right? It is eight? four and a half inches of material. Yep. All right. Let's get some blowout on it. Um, knock out on oh. the top of the panel here. Yeah. You want one, one to one or two to one? Do you care? Uh, Two to one, yeah. I like that because it'll leave you more 
future space. Right. Yep. I think uh, 13 is the right number. 13 on this one. Yep. Big blue? ATS, big blue. All right, um, Tim, you're going to be the guy to hold that about as high as you can and wanted. twist it to the left. So we see what you can do. Crossfitter, time to shine. There it is. Okay, let's get our height now. Coming down. Got any anything left in you? I like the bouncing method. Okay. You gotta rubber mail it if you need one. Thank you. There it is. <laughs> yeah. No <laughs> screws required. And you're happy now with the heights on these guys on the cross chuck that you got. That you're yes. not too low. Right. Final, final. Definitely not too high. And our bars are almost an exact match where you got there and there. Um, before we do anything else in here, let's um, see how that's going to work for us outside to make sure meter and ATS oh, yeah. all match up. Yeah. We're at the meter outside, immediately opposite the electrical panel. And we see our penetration is right there in the center of the meter at the same height as the knockout. So now we have a reference point, which is good. That's all I wanted to see there. So we're going to line up our exterior equipment, line up our interior equipment, and make sure knockouts line up in a reasonable fashion before we go doing anything crazy. So let's just hold that ATS up here. ATI, ah, you got it. You the man, and we'll come in tight to the right, right about there-ish. And you got that? Yes. Nice. And so <clears throat> minimum and maximum, as we've got it positioned here, would be 22 and eight and a half. So, Mr. Customer, um, Penetration to the panel is center here. We need to be, ooh, a little, even a little further. Go left, Tim, go left. Keep going, keep going. Stop right there. Yes, okay. Oh, sorry. Bit more, bit more. Okay, and uh, based on our spacing inside, in order to come out of the back of the ATS and penetrate, we need to separate these with a length of pipe that is mm -hmm. 23. Right. The other option, and again, they're completely equal to me, is to bring the ATS over here and then have the length of pipe coming out the left side and penetrating. And with a 90, you mean? Correct. LB? What do you like? LB. I mean, if it's over here, over time, this, this thing's going to grow and grow into it. It's probably better to keep it a little further mm -hmm. away, don't you think? Or? Yep. Let's slide over there, Tim. Put the edge right at 22, which is there. Come back to me. Boom. Let's just confirm that. So 33 from center of hole. Yeah. So that would be our penetration offset from the mounting hole. 20, 21 is where we want to be. Okay. I mean, if you were actually having a fire, fire <clears throat> trying to get to an emergency disconnect and stuff, this makes it more visible. Mm -hmm. oh and if this thing grows <laughs> in, it's not like, ah, you know. Right. Okay. We got it. Thanks. You can bring that back inside. We'll... So Bruce, right up against the eye joist, flush, screw through the side. Right, Boom. Going up there. One down here, one up there. Let's see what style did they get? Um, so this has got know. mounting screws that will go right through there. Your choice, Tom. You're going to put that right. It would be this orientation up against the eye joist. Or do you want Bruce to pull out another remodel box? We'll turn it sideways. Yeah, that's All cool. right. Yeah, Bruce, use these. They'll just be more stout. Okay. There, that's what I was looking for. Yep. Okay, that's what so I was your, your wire will be continuous. Don't make junctions in the box. Just come continuously into that heater. And then if you recall, just Tom's... Just pull the room max you're saying through the con uh, metal flex. Yep. Yeah. Through the box, which will give it a nice transition. Through the yep. plate, which will keep it secured uh, with a connector. Because we've elevated our ground bars from where they were factory mounted here up to there and the factory provided holes, our neutrals are not going to have as much contest for space. We're just a, uh, The concern is that something's going to end up short and we're going to have to junction it. It's not going to be that clean professional finish we're looking for. 
So I think we're in good shape at this elevation. So we've got a flush fit back to the wall. Okay, so Tim, a number of things. We can drill that hole. We can knock this out. We can uh, clean that up, just to remove the loose debris. And we can install the nail plates at this point. They'll slide up underneath the drywall to protect anybody from penetrating that at a later date, Mike mounting guys, shelves yeah. and whatnot. Yeah, I've got two, so if you can pop those off and slide a continuous one up there, that'll be a better solution. I'm pulling wire on a uh, far distance. <laughs> Definitely helps make the job easier. I uh, keep one on my van now at all times. So um, I'm getting ready to feed this to Tim. Um, okay, I'll be right up, Tim. Felt some insulation. There it is. You almost sound you're in the bay next to me, but. You're hitting the four? Right. Okay. Okay. Um, we can try that. Try to nice. put one or two more on. The SDS. Okay. Yeah, I got plenty. Uh, you want me to keep, pull the rest out? Yeah, I'll pull the rest out like that. We are ready to core the outside of Tom's house. We sent a pilot bit through the knockout in the back of the panel, through the brick. We verified our dimensions. Everything's gonna line up, no monkey business, and I'm now coring from the outside in. Now that we've got our, not just our pilot, but our four full core through the wall, I'm a little bit lower than what I'd like to be, so I am using this ratcheting KO kit at two inch, and I'm gonna drop that hole about three eighths of an inch so that uh, we get alignment here. So that's not gonna be difficult. Reverse. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Are you laughing at my big channel locks? No. I don't know. I just didn't know. Tom, do you wanna crank that thing, that stud that fights us? Oh, this I think this might be where, yeah, it's gonna be tough. Tough, tough. A tough battle. Okay, you, oh, you made it look easy. And we're coming up a little bit, so I'm gonna bump into you. Another. That's all right. Yep. Boom. Okay. Now the question is, is that a fit? Oh, come on, just a hair more. We're maxed. Those. Thankfully, our breakers are higher. Okay. So we might want to do GFCI breakers at the top. Right. To your point, I think that's yeah. good. I was thinking about that after the fact. Yeah, this one obviously can go to the bottom. Right. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut that, and get it out of our way here. We know what that is since it's a unique conductor to this game. Yeah, all right, so we've got almost all of our interior prefab done and we're ready for prefab and our exterior equipment. It's just a matter of following a logical train of thought and making sure your heights are gonna match up, making sure your uh, pipe size, wire size is all a fit with your ampacity, but that's, that's legwork that Tom's already done. We've already thought through. So now it's just the physical layout of the equipment on the wall that we're coming up against. And so far success, but of course the gren gremlins don't show up for the party until the end. We'll see. Okay, I've got uh, drywall screws for you here, Tom. And it doesn't take much to hold that in place, but as you can see, it's going to want to naturally work its way out of the wall. So I would mount those screws in such a place as to prevent that movement. And those are in the, the slots. Yeah. Yep, yeah. got it. So drive the screws towards the back of the slots. Okay, these threads are always a bit of a fight. There it is. 
or maybe it's just me. Put the I'm just gonna line that up with this, and then we'll get our mark on the side. Tom, would you wanna bring this level and I'll bring a torpedo level? Get a little bit more. Okay. And then what we're looking for is between them, that's gonna be a striped pipe. And feel free to come in here on my right. Of course, it's gonna be, you wanted it to be, uh, so Not, it's longer than that, so. Yeah, uh, maybe put it on the bottom and transfer that over. Well, I gotta do it the other way then. Okay. So we are two and three quarter to center and I wanna be two and three quarter to center. Let's see if we can. Level. Want to move over here, or I think you're okay. Okay, so uh, guys, this is where we stop and we talk about ethics, practices, geographies. Okay, <laughs> you might get slapped with a substantial meter tampering fine, tampering fine, four hundred bucks, five hundred bucks. I don't know. It could be more in your area if you don't understand the standards and regulations of your local utility company. I've not pulled the meter. I've only removed the cover. I do have a permit, which we actually post on orange paper. That's just us internally for uh, visibility. And then we've got a self-certification tag. This isn't, you've heard me say it before, this is an attestation, a, a testimony of our license on this project. And me specifically, my license, my current livelihood. So. Uh, I'm not pulling the meter. I am gonna put this inside the meter cabinet. The meter cabinet is live. Um, and then we're gonna post this in a visible place uh, before when work starts and prior to inspection. It's 11.40 now, so we've got about 25 minutes left before we go for our lunch break today. And um, you need to understand your local standards, your inspectors. You need to have rapport with the powers that be in your jurisdiction. Rapport, right? Yeah, pick up the phone and call them. Dumb, I want to do it right. What do you want from me? <laughs> right? And those are magical words. They don't hear those from other contractors. And if you say them, you will win favor. You got to follow through on what they say. But if you say them, you will win favor like other contractors don't. People who try to get away with things, try to push the limits, try to uh, be difficult. No bueno. All right, we're prepped for tomorrow. That's the last time I get in there until the utility company comes out and kills power at the transformer, de-energizes this, and then we're wiring like hounds straight out of hell. Yeah, so what you gotta do is understand your local codes and wiring protection. See, Romex, this black stuff here, it's not rated to be subject to physical damage by the code, and that's a universal standard. However, the application and interpretation of that varies dramatically at times from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. So in this case, if it's exposed below eight feet, is considered subject to physical damage in this jurisdiction. So we're putting a half inch metal flex to sleeve it and so that uh, we're not worried about uh, conduit fill because this is a conduit, it's just a metal flexible conduit. Uh, we're not worried about conduit fill because it's a short length of conduit that is for the purpose of supporting and protecting wiring alone. And so we can uh, overfill it if you, if you would and uh, we've got to have connectors so that it's properly terminated. We don't want any sharp edges, those sharp metal edges uh, eating into our wire on either end. And we're gonna use a 90 degree connector down here so that we get a nice clean finish up to the heater. Wouldn't look terrible to have a bit of a that action, but I like that action better. So that's it. Okay, here's, here's one piece of big news. We uh, acquired another company, super excited. We're getting some great talent. We're getting uh, eight to 12 new team members. 
uh, whoever will come over with them and I'm super stoked, more on that later. However, one of the things that they taught me that I'm excited about is utilizing these nail plates for above electrical panels. See what we've got there is three little skimpy nail plates and probably a joint and then another nail plate over there. But these things come in uh, four by 18, so you get total coverage of an entire stud base. If you've got major power coming through, block the whole thing off. And if you're drilling holes at a later date, those penetrations are gonna be protected. So this is new best practice. Every panel, every time, total protection, the full bay width, top to bottom. We've got an inch and a half shoulder on this. Okay. However, we've got on both ends, but we'll use, utilize this end. This is gonna be left loose on purpose. The, the length of that thread is about three eighths. Okay. And we've got an inch and a half play on each side. It's not quite full inch and a half play because obviously you want a good seat. Mm -hmm. So if you split the difference and cut the pipe three sixteenths of an inch short on each end, okay. then you'll insert it from the connector, the thread side, and then center up the pipe. Okay. Wouldn't another option be to have it cut to the right length, slide it in, slide it on there, and then slide it up? For sure. Unfortunately, I don't have any 2-inch PVC with me. It's still at the shop. I do, but it's PVC. It's not the gray stuff. It's Try the, the gray PVC, stuff? But that's not what you meant. Right. There's PVC, and then there's PVC. Oh, okay. Yeah. So mine is just schedule 40. It's not schedule 80, blah, blah, blah. Exactly. Alrighty. How about that impact, please, sir? Yep. If you did that, I was equipped. But I am in so far, so good. We've got a 3 16th SDS plus bit that's drilled our pilots for these quarter inch tap cons. We have sealed the penetration. There it is. We've sealed the penetrations because that water is going to infiltrate, it's going to freeze thaw, and it's going to eventually work itself free if you don't close it up. I think we're prepped for cutover day. You see, the utility company throws wildcard at us when they're going to disconnect and reconnect power. There could be, they're, they're, you call them same day in our utility company, you call them same day and they say one to three hour window for disconnect. And when you're done, sufficiently done with the work to safely reconnect power, you call them back for a one to three hour window. However, I've had, I've had customers call me at midnight before saying, my power's still not on, what's going on? And I'll call the utility company and you get a variety of answers. You might get, oh, I apologize, we forgot about you and we're dispatching someone now. Or you might get, yep, they're still on their way. They ran into trouble and they'll be out there in one to three hours. <laughs> you never know. So what we're doing is minimizing the downtime on our side so that we have as much latitude for the utility chaos. So we're done out here for today. We're just gonna put the covers on uh, so we're weather tight and we're ready for cutover day. All right, that's a wrap. Time for lunch. Check out part two of this video where we will run 300 feet of feeder wire and control wire through Tom's house and take power offline, bring it back up, subscribe to Electric Pro Academy for real skills to make real money. All right.